Hello everybody, welcome back to our Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Zeressa 2K24. But before that, this video is brought to you by GoldenEye48 and Raznak. Thank you for being Farmer Barons. So the Zeressa 2K24 map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Zeressa. That's, that's how I'm gonna go with the name. This map is based on a real town of Zeressa, which is located in Slovenia. This map features hills to simulate the reality of the Slovenian landscape. On this map, you'll have a special store and a lot of different points of sale. There is a lot of forestry for your forestry work, a main street that runs through the city. There is also many smaller roads that lead to more difficult to access meadows and fields. On this map, you'll find small, medium, and large things like 60 new building models, 83 fields, new trees and foliage textures, new ground paint textures, nine playable farms and three separate stables, two sawmills, a biogas plant, a vineyard area and production, manure system support, many different production factories, animal dealer, liming station and quarry, possibility of refilling your water from ponds and rivers, one gas station, and own new buildings. Now this map does have some required mods. Those required mods are meadow fence pack, placeable power line, biomass power plant, small composite hall, big storage hall, bunker silo with roof, small modular bunker, si bunker silo pack, old wood sheds, agricultural hall, farmer's market, and Deco Chapel. Now, in addition to those required mods, we are going to be using mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, anima food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you load this map up in farm, manager mode, or start from scratch, you will find that some of the buildings on the map are missing. And quite frankly, they're going to line up with the buildings that you could sell in new farmer mode. I would definitely suggest not starting the game up in any mode other than new farmer and 100% do not sell any of the buildings here on any of the farms because, well, the results are just not going to be overly desirable. Now, with respect to a low-end system support, I was able to achieve frames anywhere between 50 and 60 FPS, mostly anywhere on the map. Now, when I was here at this starting farm and looking in this general direction, when I was using my low-end test system, which does have integrated AMD graphics, I was getting frames in and around low 50s. But if for whatever reason I was looking pretty much anywhere else, I had a nice solid 60 FPS. So something when looking in this general direction was causing me lower frame rates. I don't know if it's because there was a significant amount of forest in that general direction or what it was, but other areas on the map for the most part were upper 50s to a nice solid 60. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. And if we take a look at our lands area, you'll see that there are a heck of a lot of viable farmlands. Farmland number two is our main starting farm. We can buy this in any alternate game mode for $94,576. Although again, I highly suggest only running this map in new farm mode because of the fact that certain buildings just are not present in those alternate game modes. And it's gonna cause you some undesirable results. In addition, we do own farmland ID seven as well. And there are several other farms and animal areas on this map. First up, there's a BGA, a farmland ID 218. That can be bought for $272,640. As far as other farms on this map, well, we have a sheep area at farmland ID 203. That can be bought for $59,920. We then have a cow farm at Farm Addy 201, that can be bought for $146,208. We have a pig area, Farmland ID 192, that can be bought for $79,936. We also have a chicken area at Farmland ID 191, 
Paying above for $174,000. We have a cow area, farmland ID 169. Paying above for $40,000. We have a pig area, farmland ID 152. That can be bought for $54,000. We have a cow area, farmland ID 134. That can be bought for $94,128. We have a sheep area, farmland ID 71 at $93,312. We have a cow farm at farmland ID 60. That can be bought for $291,936. We have another cow area, farmland ID 11. That can be bought for $227,000. We have a buildable site at farmland ID 230. And what's interesting about this is that looking at the PDA, it appears that there are some buildings here. But when we do get down here during our fly around portion of the video, you're going to see that this is a large open area. So I don't know if it's a mistake that we don't have some buildings there or what might other possibilities be going on. Now, there is a horse area also at farmland ID 53. I think I skipped over that. And that should be all of the farms that are available here on this map. We do have all the standard crops available to us in FS22 available. And if we do have the premium expansion, we will have access to our red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included, and then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? And as we know, we have a ton of viable farmlands on this map. Well over 200, with a significant portion of them being forested areas. Now, I do want to say early on in this video, this map is an extremely attractive map, but looks aren't always the best judge for quality. I did find several little little issues scattered around this map, and we'll be talking about those a little bit later. Here we have our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And as you can see, a vast majority of these fields are going to be less than one hectare in size. Let's go ahead and take a look at our soil map. This map is making use of the U.S. soil map that is included with the Precision Farming mod. And given the small size of these fields, well, you can see a large portion of the soil map is obscured because all of this dark area is going to be forest. We have several fields that are a single soil type, either silty clay or sandy loam here to the north. And then to the south, we get a little bit of loam being mixed in. But overall, the majority of the pre-placed or pre-set up fields on this map are going to either be silty clay or sandy loam. We do have the standard base game crop counter available to us on this map as well. And if we take a rundown through our prices screen, well, you're going to see that we have some historical issues. Not with crops, but with productions. We do have the ability to sell all of our base game crops, as well as our animal outputs and eggs, wool, and milk. But once we get down here to our productions, you're going to see that for whatever reason, and we've seen this plenty of times before, fabric and our companion crop, our companion production, chocolate, we don't have the ability to sell either of those. And what's really frustrating with that is that, well, one of the productions that are available on this map is a dairy. In addition, we do not have the ability to buy bulk lime, but we do have a lime production point, and therefore we're going to be able to sell lime. We do have a stone crusher at the lime production point as well. With respect to the farm production pack, we do not have the ability to sell any of the washed root crops. With respect to our platinum expansion, Given the vast amount of forestry on this map, it really is quite a shame that we don't have any of the ability to sell the Platinum Expansion products. We do have the ability to sell our Premium Expansion products, and those playing with pumps and hoses, you will be able to get rid of your separated manure, and those playing with straw harvest, 
you can also get rid of your hay or straw pellets. Now, given the size of the fields on this map, it's rather shocking at the size of our starting fleet. We do have a lot of vehicles and implements here. All of them are owned, none of them are leased, and they're all very well maintained. We start out owning the cow barn on the main starting farm. We have contracts available to us on this map, and we do not own any production chains at the start. And then lastly, this map does not have any collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start off by owning the small Valtra A105 high-tech tractor, as well as a Zetor Proxima HS80. We have the Dutzfar Topliner 4090H Harvester, that's paired up with the 4090H header, and our header trailer. We have the Death Mower in the CC66. We have a DK115 Welger trailer. We have the Pottinger Servo 25 Plow, as well as the Nordstein HK25 NS3030 Cedar, Power Hero and Combinate and Power Hero and Cedar combination. We have the FarmTech Vario Fex 750 manure spreader, as well as the F240 front mower, the Alpine Hit 4.4H tether, and the Top 342 windrower. We have the Boss Alpine 251 forage wagon, the Massey Ferguson 1840 small baler, the M160 Anderson log trailer and the RA142 TMR mixer. We have a Q3M front loader arms, and for the front loader arms, we have a pallet fork and universal bucket. And then lastly, we have a single 600 kilogram front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, this map does not have any mods or DLCs, custom vehicles or implements. Now I've gone ahead and purchased all of the various farms on this map. And as such, you can see, we now have a lot of various icons scattered around. I have also purchased the BGA as well. And in addition, I have gone ahead and also purchased all of the production plants. I've also filled the production plants as far as the outbound products, because one of the, one of the little niggles I have with this map is that not all of the pallet spawn points are well marked. And as such, you're gonna see when we get around to looking at all those, some of the output products are not gonna be where you might expect them to be. And as I said, some of them aren't marked at all. Or in one case, uh, uh, it doesn't output any product whatsoever, which is a little frustrating. And it's easy to overcome by simply setting this to auto sell or to distribute to over to your carpentry, but don't expect to get planks out of the sawmill that is over at one of the farms. So we have a fairly standard biogas plant here that is going to take our inputs, make energy, methane gas, and digestate. We have a sawmill. Now this particular sawmill is going to be at one of our farms. It will take logs and make planks and wood chips, but this one will not output planks, not one bit. And I don't know what's going on with that, but as we can see, we have this completely full, but all of the other productions are gonna have one of the outputs is gonna be less than full because it would have already spawned the pallets. So we have a second sawmill on the map that is again gonna take wood or logs, make planks and wood chips. We've got a fairly standard bakery here. It's gonna make bread and cakes. We have a fairly standard grain mill that is gonna make flour. We have our carpentry that is going to take wood or planks and make furniture and wood chips out of that. A fairly standard dairy that is going to take butter, cheese, or output butter, cheese, and chocolate. But remember, we cannot sell chocolate, so don't make it or you're going to have to put down your own sell point. We've got a fairly standard grape processor as well as a lime production, which is going to take stones and triple that and produce lime. And then we have a standard oil mill. Now, as far as the starting farm goes here, well, when we load in, we're right here at our farmhouse. We're going to go inside and we have our sleep trigger. Here we have our, our death mower. Stay away from that thing. We have our cow farm or cow barn right up there on the hill. We have our manure heap down below. 
This barn has a built-in hayloft. This is going to be our dump point for that hayloft. We can haul a total of 90 cows in this particular pasture. We have our dump point here for our food trough and for our straw. And this is going to be our output pipe for the hayloft. We have our milk trigger located right there. And if we make our way back down to the other side to the lower level, we have our slurry point. Now, this is one of the buildings that you can sell. It's also one of the buildings that isn't going to appear in any alternate game mode. And that's going to be quite a problem because, well, some of the deco elements around this area are going to remain which is gonna make this area a little difficult to landscape and put other things down. We got another shed here for our harvester. Some more of our machinery is located right there. And then we have some of our farm equipment also located on the other side of the street where we're also gonna find our silo. Now the silo will allow you to purchase in product as well as store product, wheat, barley, oat, canola, sorghum, sunflower, soybeans, corn. Then we have our dump point and our fill point there as well. Now that is the main starting farm. So we are started right here and I'm going to make my way around Counter clockwise. So let's go ahead and jump over here to our sheep barn. Our sheep barn has a hayloft built inside of it as well. So here we have our dump station for the hayloft. And this is going to be our output pipe for our hayloft. We have our dump area here for our food trough. Before we go and lose it, this is where our wool is going to spawn. These corner markers are somewhat obscured. And we're going to be able to store 65 sheep in this pasture. And I really like these buildings. I think these are all really cool. I feel like these are part of those custom buildings that were built for the map. Here we have some deco elements like hay stacked up here at the hayloft and then again that is going to be our output location and now we're going to make our way down the hill to the next farm area and this is the area that has the sawmill and this is this particular sawmill that for whatever reason does not output any blank pallets. So if you do use this sawmill, you will need to either set the planks to auto sell or distribute. Here we wood cell trigger. We have our dump point for our logs and our interactive icon, as well as our fill pipe for wood chips. We have our dairy trigger for our milk. Here we have our dump station for hayloft. We can by 80 cows for this cow pasture. We have our food trough here at the lower level. And we're going to find our slurry as well as our output pipe for the hayloft. And again, I really like these buildings where we have multiple levels. And we have up here then hay modeled being stored in here in loose. I said I really like these buildings and I feel these are part of those custom buildings that the map author alluded to. We have our sleep trigger for this particular farm right here. Now we're going to quickly run over to this farm. 
We have our slurry point for our pigs. We have our food trough. We have our manure heap. And we have our pig pickup. 40 pigs in this pig pen. So I'll come down here to the next farm. This is going to be a chicken farm. So we have our sleep trigger. One hundred chickens in total. Here we have our food trough. We have our milk trigger for our cows. Now, hopefully, we're going to find some markers here indicating where these eggs are going to spawn. Possibly there. 50 cows. We have our dump point for our food here. We have our slurry point. I guess our cows are going to have access to that pasture, which is, again, pretty cool. We have a manure heap. And then, yeah, I'm pretty confident this is going to be for our chicken eggs. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, uh I was wanting to go up the steps, but okay. We'll just, we'll just live with it. So we started here. Now we went to the sheep area. We covered the cow area, the pig area, and this chicken farm. Let's jump over here to farmland 8169 to this cow pasture, which is conveniently right next to a ski lift. So we have our milk trigger, our water trough, our food trough, and our cow point. 50 cows in total in this pasture. On this hillside where we have a ski lift. And then I'm just going to assume that this is going to be our our downhill ski run. Get back up onto the lift. And then we got a little bit of a snow lodge going on here. Pretty cool. Pretty cool structure. Yeah, now the next pig barn, which is over here, just south of field 21. We have our slurry point. We have our food trough. We have our pig drop off. 108 pigs in total in there. We do have a, well, what you'd think would be a pull through silage bunker, but it's not going to come up. This must be, must be just a general construction site. Now we have another cow barn located just down the street from where we just were over there. Here we do have a silage bunker. We have a dump point for a hayloft. We have then a slurry point and a manure heap. We have our food trough and 65 cows in this cow pasture uh, 
I believe this is going to be for our hayloft. Not super clear on that. And I'll be honest, I'm guessing this is going to be for our milk. Because we haven't seen any other indicator really strongly leaning us to a milk output other than possibly up there. It would be nice to see something like milk jugs just to give us some sort of affirmation. We have a sleep trigger inside of this farmhouse. Another pull through stylish bunker. Some nice kind of on point sheds here. Another sheep barn. Small sheep area. 65 sheep in all in this pasture. So we have our food trough and our wool spawn point. A large cow barn here. Kind of a larger farm going on. 130 cows. For a slurry point. We have our food trough. We have our straw trigger inside of there. Our milk point. We have another one of these fillable silos. There again, are going to store our grains. They dump and fill point there. Some more sheds, and then three kind of shallow pull through silage bunkers. We have a horse barn located here. So we're going to be able to do 12 horses. And we have our dump point for our food. Another fillable silo. And then some nice storage areas. And we have our exercise area here as well. Getting toward the end of all the various farms. We got another cow farm located here, cow barn at Farmland ID 30 just north of field 54. So we have our slurry point. Here we're gonna have our milk point, I believe. Might possibly our manure heap. How do I get in? Oh, from this end, we then have our food trough. I thought that fencing was going to go up. And we can do 30 cows in this small pasture. A couple of supporting sheds over here. And a pull through silage bunker. Now if we make our way up this hill. Well, we got another nice kind of hay barn. And then we have our final cow farm for this large cow shed. So we have our farmhouse sleep trigger. It's going to be for our milk. Two pull through silage bunkers. Some more machinery sheds. Another fillable silo. 120 cows in all. We have our slurry point, our food trough. 
our manure. And again, as I mentioned earlier, some of the buildings on these farms can be sold. Most of them cannot. And of the things that can be sold, there are often deco elements that are going to remain. So while you can customize the farms, you really shouldn't because it will lead and can lead to some rather undesirable results. So as far as giving this map a score with respect to farm customization, I'm going to give the map a little bit of a hard score with just 0.5. We do have a ton of farms and the inability to cleanly sell these buildings does, in my opinion, just add up and compound over time. That's why we're going to go with just a half a point. With respect to production being built in, though, we have 11 productions pre-placed on this map. We have two sawmills, a bakery, gray mill, carpentry, dairy, a grape processor. We have a line production, oil production, a BGA, and a biomass power plant. And all of those are pre-placed on the map. We're going to give the map a full point there. We're going to give the map three quarters of a point with respect to production being built in. Or no, the ability to sell our basing crops, production items, and animal outputs. Because we do not have the ability to sell fabric or chocolate unless we put our own sell point down. And that's compounded a little bit because of the fact that we have a, a dairy that will produce chocolate. Now, with respect to our animal food requirements, let's just take a quick look down here, looking at the animal food overview screen. And what we see here is fairly standard animal food requirements across all of the animal types. Now, from the starting farm, I do want to get to our kind of our fly around portion of the map. Here we can see our starting farm located on this hillside. And as we kind of overlook the map, you can see that we do have lots of varied terrain as far as elevation and things go. Our starting field is going to be tucked back here in the woods, located right there. The farm we just finished at is located right here, just to the south. And here we have our dairy. We just were talking about our dairy where we can produce chocolate, butter, and cheese. So we have our interactive icon there. We have our pallet spawn point. Well, three pallets are going to spawn inside of here. But then we also have more pallets that are going to spawn here along the side. And then we have our dump station for our inputs. Neither of these pallet spawn point locations are marked. That's why I went ahead and spawned in productions production pallets at some various production points. So we're going to make our way westerly and in a southerly direction. Here is that smaller cow pasture that we talked about. And let's come back over here because this is going to be a sell point for the livestock market. So we have our sell point for the market. And let me check something because I want to pull up the triggers here because when we get to the shop, we have an animal icon as if it we're going to be able to buy animals there. And it's just hanging out. But there's no actual trigger there. And I was trying to figure out where... We could buy animals earlier on when I was looking at this map before recording, and I couldn't figure out where I think it should have been. But the fact that this is the animal market bail sell point, I'm thinking this is where we should be able to buy our, our animals, but I'm not seeing any sort of a trigger pop up to offer me to do that. Here we have our grapes and our grape processor. 
So we have our interactive icon. We have our dump point for our grapes, located right there. And then we have our pallet spawn point. Yeah, lots of nice vines already pre-placed. We have that horse farm that we just took a look at. We have another one of the cow farms that we took a look at. Let's loop back around to the south. So we have our fuel station on the map. We have a single fuel station, according to the description. Here we have our flour mill. So we have our dump point, our interactive icon, and our pallet of flour. I guess it's technically called a grain mill, but I've kind of gotten accustomed to calling it the flour mill. We have a grocery cell point located right here. And then across the way, we have our vehicle shop. So we have our dealer trigger located right there. And then our dealer trigger is marked out here. This is that animal buy trigger I mentioned. And nowhere around here do we get a pop-up saying to buy our animals. And in fact, if we look at the triggers, you'll see that there isn't actually one here. We have our trigger marker, our trigger for the dealer. We have our trigger here for the actual service area. Now we have up here what looks like it could be a, a trigger, but if we position ourselves under it or try to position ourselves in it, uh, it doesn't pop up. Now it's possible that trigger is improperly coded and it doesn't have a Z height. It just has an X and a Y for width and length, but not a height. And as such, that's why it's not popping in here. Look for possibly a map update. Now inside, you're going to find our shop trigger right there at the counter. Let's go ahead and pick up our Mahindra. And we'll see it spawns here around the back. Not that bad of an area for our vehicles to spawn, especially given the overall size of these fields. Now we will have to get our vehicles from around the side. So this area here does somewhat limit the width or length of what we can purchase. And then of course we've got to get it out of the shop and either make left or a right turn. If we do go to the right, we have our bakery. We have our interactive icon here. Around the back, we're gonna have our pallet spawn point unmarked and our dump station. Now, if we continue to make our way westerly, this is that building site that I mentioned that based on the PDA graphic, looks like it should have a couple buildings here, but it doesn't. Instead, it's just a large open area. So again, this may be an error or it may be intended and the PDA is just slightly off. We have our oil mill. So we have our dump point, our pallet point, and our interactive icon around the side. Here we have our biomass heating plant. And for whatever reason, this isn't popping up. Now, when I was testing this map, I did use a console command to buy all farmland. And I do notice that this particular farmland is not buyable if I simply click on it. So I believe that this may also be an error because if we look at the listing of productions, we're gonna see in this listing of productions that a biomass heating plant, if I run this list from the console, which is what I'm usually running, a biomass heating plant right here, Russia point one, is on the map. Owner 15 simply means that you have to own the land 
in order to own the production. Since this is on unviable land, we can't own it. So that is possibly an error. We'll have to see if map author comments in this video or if there is an update to correct this issue. We have our lime point located right here. And this is going to be our lime production, right? So we have our dump for our stones, our interactive icon. Then we have our output pipe for the lime. Your way back towards town. We have our flour mill that we've already taken a look at. Our gas station. We're going to come over here to our small sheep pasture. All the way over here to the west. Well, this is where we're going to find our second sawmill. Now, this is a sawmill that does output pallets. So we have our wood dump point, our wood cell trigger, our interactive icon. We have our pallets of planks underneath this roof. Again, it's not marked. That's why I wanted to spawn those. We have our wood chip point here at the conveyor belt. And the other wood cell trigger over there, that was a general cell wood all the time. And this is where we're going to bring our wood and logs to get into our production. You going to make our way around. We have another cow pasture, which we've already looked at. I believe this was a pig pig facility if I'm remembering correctly and then all the way up there to the north that was going to be a cow pasture let's make our way kind of back towards the center of the map what is dense dense forest a really good forest map if you want to get into forestry then in this kind of a low bowl clearance, we have the biogas plant, three pull through silage bunkers, and we have the BGA. We can sell the BGA if we wish to. We can sell the light poles, but some of these other deco elements, they are going to be permanent. The silage bunkers are also permanent, as well as the scale house. Uh, let's make our way up here. I like how we have some dead trees scattered in and around. Like I said, this map, it does look very nice, but there are a few kind of functional issues that I do hope get cleared up in an update. We have our sheep pasture, which we've taken a look at. Then we have the cow farm down here. Then we had another pig pasture. And then I believe this was another cow pasture. And then that's it. Now I'd love to know what you all think down in the comments below with respect to this map. But before we really close this thing out, let's talk about buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. I'm going to go ahead and give the map a full point there. I do know that there are some custom buildings on the map that really aren't. Um, but the vast majority of the buildings on here are. And therefore, we're going to go ahead and maybe be a little strict on one and be a little bit lenient on another point system. Now, as far as the description. It sounded to me that the description was implying that we had custom paint ground textures 
if we have custom ground textures, they're not they're not here in the landscaping menu. If we have custom plants, they're not here in the landscaping menu. If we have custom trees, they're not here in the landscaping menu. So that's a little frustrating because from the description, the way I read it, it sounded like we would have custom trees that we could plant. It also sounded like we would have custom ground textures for when we were doing our landscaping and things like that, but it just doesn't seem like we do. Then lastly, triggering interactive areas being clearly marked. There were several areas where we were missing those indicators. If we hadn't caused those pallets to spawn, I think we would have been left maybe wondering where some of those productions were basically at. Uh, so we're going to give the map a half a point there. That's going to wrap this map up with a score of 3.75 out of 5. Not a bad score. There is some room for improvement. That is for sure. So I wouldn't necessarily hold off on this map until there's an update. But just do, do know that maybe if you're going to add this to your list of maps to play. Maybe once you do come around to getting a chance to play on this map. Check and see if there has been an update put out to possibly correct a few of the things that we've seen here in this video. As well as probably other things that have not been found in this video that others might find along the way. Until next time, happy farming.